We are moving now to a theoretical analysis of the P0 problem, and we will start with a very interesting special case known as the two auto. Our starting point is the problem we have defined as P0, seeking the sparse solution of an underdetermined linear system. While we pose it as our ideal goal to address, we are well aware of its flaws. First, the requirement AX equals B is unforgiving to small perturbations, either A or B. That is to say, if indeed the system AX equals B has a very sparse solution, a small deviation in B, for example, will cause the new system to lose the sparse solution it had. Another flaw has to do with the L0 measure, also being too strict. A vector that is essentially sparse but has many very small entries will be considered by this measure as a dense one. Let's just decide to disregard these flaws for now. We will certainly come back and fix them later on. Well, what do we mean by a theoretical analysis of P0? In order to answer this question, let's recall the properties of the P2 problem, which was regularized using an L2 expression. We have seen that this problem has a unique solution and one that can be obtained by a closed form formula. Could we hope to say the same for P0? Not quite. We will definitely address the matter of uniqueness of the solution of P0, but in a different way, posing conditions for its existence. Furthermore, we will show that a simple test for a candidate solution can verify whether it is indeed the sparsest. Lastly, we will talk about practical numerical methods to compute this solution. And all this brings us to define now the two auto case. The reason we turn to this special case is mostly historic. This is how the knowledge in our field evolved. Suspecting that the P0 problem is too complicated, researchers turned to seek a more intuitive entry point. In the two auto case, we consider matrices A of very special form, constructed as the amalgam of two orthogonal matrices, Psi and Phi. These matrices are obviously square, n by n. And orthogonality implies that the transpose of these matrices serves as their inverse. A small comment is in order here. I will assume that these matrices are over the reals, but everything I describe applies to complex matrices just as well, with a proper migration from transpose to Hermit transpose. In these orthogonal matrices, the columns are normalized and orthogonal to each other, and in fact, the same holds true for their rows. An immediate implication is that for a system of the form psi x equals b, the solution is trivially obtained as the multiplication psi transpose times b. Another implication is the Parseval property, which states that the L2 length of a vector is not affected by the multiplication by such matrices. What is so appealing about the two auto? Consider the case in which A is built of the identity and the Fourier matrices. If we are given a signal B that is built of few harmonies and few spikes, its description will be dense in either of these two bases. However, when posed as a linear combination of the columns of A, such a signal could be described sparsely. This motivated researchers to study the P0 for this special case, aiming to characterize the solutions of this problem, terms for getting a unique solution, and more. A fundamental tool for the analysis that follows is the quantification of the distance between Psi and Phi. We define the mutual coherence as the maximal absolute inner product between columns taken from Psi and Phi. Observe that if Psi and Phi share a common column, this coherence, denoted as mu, becomes 1. This is, in fact, the maximal possible value of mu, and as we will shortly see, it stands for the worst situation in which Psi and Phi are too close to each other. An interesting question to ask is about the other extreme case. How small can mu be? In order to answer this question, let's have another interpretation of mu. Computing the multiplication psi transpose phi, we get a matrix that contains all the possible inner products of the pairs of columns taken from psi and phi. Therefore, the coherence is the maximal of the entries in this matrix after an absolute value. So, Armed with this insight, it is very easy to see that the smallest possible mutual coherence is 1 over square root of n. The proof is nearly immediate. Remember that the matrix psi transpose phi is itself an orthogonal matrix, 
and thus each of its rows or columns must be L2 normalized. If we assume that the coherence is below 1 over square root of n, it implies that all the absolute entries in this matrix are below this value as well. Thus, when computing the norm of a column, any column, it will be strictly smaller than 1, posing a contradiction to the fact that this matrix is orthogonal. Therefore, the minimal possible value is 1 over square root of n, as claimed. A question that follows is whether one could find a pair psi and phi that achieves this lowest possible value. We refer to such a case as a maximally incoherent ortho pair. Indeed, the identity and the Fourier matrices lead to such a maximally incoherent pair, for which all the entries in the matrix psi transpose phi have the same absolute value, 1 over square root of n. For those of you who do not like complex matrices, we could replace the Fourier by the Hadamard matrix, getting the same maximal incoherence property.